Hello and welcome. In 2011, the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, made some recommendations to the federal government indicating serious public health and environmental hazards to the people of Ogoni land and the need to ensure a steady cleanup of the area, which results may take years to accomplish, if not decades. Well, to this end, the Ministry of Petroleum Resources under the present administration set out to establish an environmental unit to begin the process of restoration of all communities impacted by hydrocarbon pollution in Nigeria, starting with Oguni land, of course. Now, this gave birth to the setting up of a program known as the Hydrocarbon Pollution Restoration Project, HYPREP, in July of 2012. Now, HYPREP's mission statement is to protect and restore the environmental human rights of all communities affected by hydrocarbon pollution here in Nigeria. The question now is, how soon should the people living in those affected communities begin to experience positive changes in their environment? Is the establishment of HYPREP truly necessary? And what is the lifespan of the program, among several other issues? And Mrs. Joy Nunye Okunu, the National Coordinator of HYPREP, is our guest this week to talk on the subject matter and what's been in the works since its establishment. I'm Ayatunde Balogun. It's question time. Mrs. Joy Nunye Okunu, you're welcome to Question Time. Thank you so much. Now, we are delighted to have you on this week's edition of the program. We're looking at the Hydrocarbon Pollution Restoration Project. Uh, that's a high prep. Now, let's uh, start off right away. Um, in August 2011, the United Nations Environmental Program uh, made some recommendations to the federal government, you know, indicating severe health hazards and environmental hazards in, in the Niger Delta. Now, that, uh, I'm sure, led to the uh, setting up of the agency uh, HYPREP in July of 2012. Now, uh, since then and now, what can you tell us? I'm talking about the impact. What has been uh, done so far? Well, I'd, I'd like to take you back a little bit. In 2006, the federal government of Nigeria commissioned the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, to carry out an environmental assessment of Ogoni land. UNEP mobilized Ogoni land three years after, in 2009, to carry out a 14-month study of Ogoni land, an environmental assessment of Ogoni land. And on the 11th of August, or oh, yeah, they submitted their report in 2011. Immediately after the submission of their report to the President and Commander-in-Chief, of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, Dr. Goodluck Abele Jonathan. He set up an interministerial committee chaired by the Honorable Minister, my Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Dezani Alison Madri, KCON. And after that, a report was submitted back to the President. And uh, you write that the Hydrocarbon Pollution Restoration Project was then set up on the 20th of July, 2012, under the Ministry of Petroleum Resources as a special environment unit, under the direct supervision of the Honorable Minister as well. And in the six months, of course, in accordance with the recommendations of the UNEP report, we met the transitional phase of setting up the project itself, getting our offices set up, recruiting of staff, and we have started the implementation of the emergency measures that were um, recommended by UNEP. That is put sign, putting up signposts and impacted sites in, around the Guni land, warning the people about the impact of, high, of hydrocarbon pollution in the communities so to, to avoid um, bathing with rain water and then also marking out the sites that have been impacted and putting up signposts on wells and um, sources of water. And most of all, providing portable water to the various communities. We have started test running um, the emergency water program. We are in a collaboration with John Hopkins University to carry out the health assessment of Ogoni land, which is one of the emergency measures. And presently, we have started registration of those living in Ogali 
to in order to set, have a medical register set up also. And we are, for the first time in the history, in the over 50 year history of oil exploration activities in Nigeria, that a special environment unit is set up in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources. Well, that's right. But of course, you know, we're in a society where many people expect uh, so quite a number of things to move rapidly you know, in terms of uh, getting results and, you know, and achieving, uh, shall I say, the best you know, that uh, whatever government is putting on the table. Rushing things in Nigeria, you know, everybody wants you to just go on, start the clean up and all of that. The minister insists that the best should be done. All right, now you made mention of your visit to uh, Arepo in Ogun State, and uh, I'm sure you're aware of all the uh, act of vandalism and criminality, if I may put that, uh, use that word, you know, taking place there. But uh, what do you really think we need to do to ensure that uh, we put this sort of uh, vandalism in, in such a uh, a, a place, you know, bring it down to the barest minimum because it's been going on for quite a while, not just in Arepo but in other parts of the country as well. Well, first of all, I disagree with you. They're not vandals. Vandals are people who just destroy just for destruction's sake. If you look at the history of vandalism in other countries. So these are crude oil thieves, they're criminals. The only thing that you can do is to give them some form of enlightenment to teach them the effects of hydrocarbon. And that's why the Honorable Minister has insisted one more time that we commission a team of um, professors. And we have commissioned a team of professors um, in the University of Port Harcourt, College of um, School of Education, um, to get secondary school curricula prepared for us for introduction in the next um, school session in Nigeria to teach in secondary schools the effects of hydrocarbon. Also, we need to carry out a massive campaign in these communities. In any case, we know that security is one major issue, you know, concerning uh, all uh, uh, installations, you know, of oil and, and gas and all of that. And of course, the communities need to be sure that uh, whoever is coming to provide the security, you know, are well equipped to do that. So perhaps the military uh, have the wherewithal. Who knows? Well, what I learned now is that all those who live on the pipeline right of way should leave. And it's one of the recommendations of UNEP. If we all stop visiting those who live on the pipeline right of way, first of all, their health, their health is a very serious issue. So if people boycott their houses, most of them are going to die. You know, it's unhealthy to live around the pipeline right of way. So if we now begin to tell those living around the pipeline of um, pipeline right of way to live. And then we can t uh, look for alternative sources of livelihood for those involved in all of this, it would be better. But it does appear that uh, you still have some cases, you know, some little cases in one or two places. Uh, perhaps I have to mention uh, the Diamond Estate here in Lagos, somewhere in the Igondo Yanoba Road. Um, there seems to be some outcry there that uh, the, the, the people living there are actually staying on, on the pipeline right of way. Well, if they are living on the pipeline right of way, they need to move. They need to move outside the pipeline right of way. And so ask, living in there and asking for compensation is, is unacceptable. Why should anyone compensate you? And yes, it, you're correct to say that UNEP actually recommended that the, um, the governments, the various governments of the states should um, um, try to relocate them or provide land irrespective of their legal status. But I want to say that there are recommendations. These are recommendations. So the, the governments would need to, the state governments would need to look into it and see how they can relocate most of these people. You were reported to have hired a technical uh, consultant, uh, you know, a technical consultant team, uh, John Hopkins University from the United States now over the oil spill in the Niger uh, Delta. Now, is that true? And if it is, you know, why 
the, the, the need for uh, expatriates, as it were, to come look into issues uh, you know, that should concern Nigerians and should be solved by Nigerians anyway? Well, John Hopkins, you know, the um, UNEP recommended an international organization for the health assessment in collaboration with any of the local schools or universities. What we're having right now is a collaboration with John Hopkins, which is the number one school of public health. And it's been that for like 20, 25 years now. And the University of Port Harcourt. We're carrying out an environmental assessment, health assessment on those living in impacted communities in Ogoni land. And we're sure we will also use them in the case of Bayelsa, where we will go further than UNEP went in the health assessment of those living there. Now, are there other levels of collaboration with other agencies in trying oh, to clean yes, up Ogoni yes, land yes. as well? Yes, we, yes, yes. We're also in talks and we're trying to conclude that with Cranfield University. Um, for water pollution control. Um, we are also, we have also initiated talks with Birmingham University, but not concluded now. Um, also, yes, we're setting up the first integrated contaminated soil management center. Now, you, you said barely uh, three months in, uh, in the course of our discussion that uh, you, there's, there's been quite a, a lot that has been it's achieved. It's over three months. Okay, over three months. Six, seven months now. Eight All right. Months, yeah. and, and, and then you can confidently say that quite a lot has been done. But I'm sure if you still go back to Ogoni land, there will still be some voices you know, saying, what are they talking about? It's still the same old story. Nothing has there changed. There will always be voices saying that. But in six months, we would like to look like the redneck lizard. And we say we have tried, even though we have to say that ourselves. We have set up high prep. Um, we've gotten everyone in place, staff in place. We're putting up signposts around the Guni land. We are providing water now in Eleme. We're test running our water project and other local government, the other three local government areas, we have our water um, stands being put and, and tanks being put in place. Our water tankers are around. I think we've done quite well. We're marking wells, marking streams that are impacted. And as I said, we can't go too far until we get the data. We need the data. So we're waiting to receive the data from you now. Because with the data, will know the impacted sites, will be able to plan. And that's why we've moved it to the end of April. All right, madam, what will you say to this uh, uh, notion from some quarters that, uh, yes, we've been battling with the issue of oil theft and, you know, bunkering, as some of us will also will put it. We have a president who is also from the Niger Delta, and uh, one would have expected there's such uh, problems to have uh, uh, become part of our history, you know, been, uh, been resolved, uh, as it were, but it's still there. It's like, it's like being overseas, being in other countries where crime still exists. You think that even in Europe, where things are subsidized, that no one would steal. But you still have people stealing. Crude oil theft, people mm. need to be aware. You know, people need to be educated on the effects of crude oil theft. And um, I, I don't really understand why people would be involved in crude oil theft. If Imo River is finished, River Etiope is gone. If you go around the delta, and I tell, I tell our people, you've got to understand that you're giving these oil companies that you campaign against the excuse to say that it's your fault. Do you really have the locals now to stand up and say there are spills? Because all we hear about now, crude oil theft. So I, I tell those in, living in the Niger Delta, educate your children. Otherwise, we'll all die off of cancer and other related diseases. So we need to educate them. So when are we hoping to see a mop top uh, Arikbo area so that you know the actual cleanup uh, can can begin? Because it seems now that Arikbo is in, in the news, you know, for all. Uh, channels. The you just, you just want us to go in and just start cleaning. It doesn't work like that. 
we have to go and carry out a proper assessment of a repo. For instance, the air analysis, you just can't go there and know what has happened. <clears throat> In Ogoni land, for instance, UNEP held that in all the air samples taken, that it was 1,000 times above the highest WHO standard. So it's frightening. You can't just feel, you can be there, but you don't know what it is. So we need to carry out a proper assessment of um, a ripple and also educate the people there to stop crude oil theft. All right, madam, we just have, have to hold our thoughts uh, for a while now and uh, take a quick break. And when we come back, we shall continue with our discussion uh, talking about uh, the uh, national uh, uh, coordinator of uh, HYPREP, that's the Hydrocarbon uh, Pollution Restoration Project, and Mrs. Joy Nunia Okunu. She's still our guest, and we'll have more to talk about after this. Stay with us. Life has just got easier. You stay connected to Channels TV, where news and innovations are shaping our world. Simply log on to ChannelsTV.com to get the breaking news. Browse the homepage according to what matters to you. Tap on the extended coverage of business, sports, politics, lifestyle, infotech, entertainment, health, world news, and lots more. Click on the live link and see the news in real time. Do you want to watch the latest video of the day? It's just a click away. Friend us on Facebook, YouTube, follow us on Twitter, Google+, Plus. participate in Channels TV poll and share your comments. It's a website you can talk to. Your voice will be heard. ChannelsTV.com The news at your fingertips. You're welcome back. It's still question time on Channels Television and our guest, Mrs. Joy Nunye Okunu, the National Coordinator of the Hydrocarbon Pollution Restoration Project, HYPREP, is still here with us. Quite a lot has been said already and of course uh, she's uh, raring to go to give us some more insights into HYPREP and what has been going on uh, since it came on board in July 2012. Now, can't we really uh, put an end to the issue of pipeline vandalism? I mean, talking about the federal government. Crude oil theft, not pipeline vandalism. Uh, crude oil Vandals theft. Just we're so destroy, used to, we're used, yes, but they because don't, we're so used they don't, to. They don't um, take anything away. It's like during a riot uh, or something, people just go break billboards and, and take off. Those are vandals. Not when you take it go and sell it. So, so it's a question That's of just going there, systematically taking it and living so those it? Those are criminals. They're taking it because they want to sell it. But in any case, is there anything we can do to, to bring uh, this uh, trend you know, to, to a stop? All of us can stand up and say no to crude oil theft. But those who are benefiting, those who are benefiting, there are three categories of crude oil thieves. They're the little petty thieves in the communities who just take this to meet their Domestic needs and needs. meet their boats to, to be able to put petrol in their diesel in their boats and move around sell for cars they're the second one group the sell to the larger community within Nigeria and then the third are the international players those who arrange for these ships to come in and then get the hose in fill the tanks with the ship and then get them out of the country. Those are the deadly ones. All of those people will say that uh, perhaps uh, high prep is just another agency, you know, just there, it's going to be there for perhaps quite a while in there, while it tries to make some impact, quote and unquote, you know, perhaps some little uh, changes coming here and there. You know, people just feel, some people feel it's uh, just another duplication, you know, by, by, by government, I, I, where we have some other there, agencies. There's, there's no other agency that has the mandate to actually carry out restoration. Most all the others are regulators. What would you also say to uh, one of the uh, UNEP's uh, r r reports that says that uh, some parts in the, of Okuni land might uh, take up to 30 years, you know, before you can uh, uh, restore some of uh, the, the mangroves? I mean... Well, that boils down to 
third tier certification they want to make sure that before it comes back yeah you can restore but for it to come back to its natural state it might take 20 30 years for you to know that this land has been greatly damaged for years um, has come back to its natural state so you might not be able to say it's 100 percent until 20 30 years doesn't mean that restoration will take 20 30 years to carry out it's getting it back to the natural state that you know so much you know when it comes to this uh, issue of uh, hydrocarbons and of course your role as the national coordinator at hyper i wonder if you are an environmentalist well being the national coordinator i'm now an environmental scientist honorary honorary well, I, well, well i've read a lot i am a lawyer i'm a lawyer um, but I've been an environmental lawyer for over 23 years now. So, so perhaps you want to give us a little um, more into into that. Uh, well, background. about the Ogoni struggle. Exactly. Oh yeah, I, I was involved in the Ogoni struggle. I was the youngest speaker and the only woman who spoke on the first Ogoni day in Buri in Ogoni land with Ken Sarawiwa and my other lead uncles who spoke. I've been in this very active in the Ogoni struggle, which earned me the Esther of Ogoni, which is the woman who saved her people from execution. I did the case for the Ogoni 19. Remember the 19 that were also charged with Ken Sarawiwa. Exactly. I got them out. If you read Ken Sarawiwa's book, A Month and a Day, you read about me, his prison notes on the struggle. So I have been involved, and I have always represented communities I've always been on the side of communities. I've read a lot, written a lot, and talked a lot about um, the effects of hydrocarbon. Now, um, the, now the, the issue of the Ogun in 19, I believe, uh, sparked of some uh, major, uh, should I say, uh, uh, awareness, you know, because if perhaps even that had happened, we wouldn't have known you know, the, the, the environmental degradation that lies in, in Ogoni land. Do you think that was a turning point, actually? International, yes. International. Remember, Nigeria was, was expelled from the Commonwealth just for this case, for the Ogoni case, in our lifetime. So it was an international issue. It's an, I mean, you go and then you say, you're Ogoni, did you know Kensaro Wiwa? So yes, it is. And I want to say that, um, like you go to Robin Island, and the, some of those who were with um, Nelson Mandela in prison are those who are the tour guards in in in, um, in Robin Island. And the minister gave us the privilege of taking some of the Oguni 19 um, to work as part of our security in um, High Prep in Bori office. Now, from all that uh, is going on with those Ina, who were in prison with cancer, we were. All right. Now, from, from all that is being ex experienced presently, you know, in federal government's efforts to try to bring uh, some uh, level of uh, uh, restoration, you know, through the uh, project that's high prep. What does this actually portend for the future? I mean, looking at the future, do you really think we can achieve quite a lot? I think so. I think socio-economic sense and development. For instance, high prep in, in carrying out our restoration program will not just deal and have contractors come in, make millions, use the people as um, laborers. The minister insists, Mr. Zezani Alison Maduke, has insisted that we go into a collaboration with the communities. So when you come as a contractor to work with us, the community becomes your community content partner through cooperative societies that we're going to register for all the communities. And the governing board of those um, um, cooperatives will be, of course, the chief, say the woman leader, the CDC chairman, the youth leader. And therefore, you must leave a certain percentage of what you make behind for the communities to know that you came you did some business and you left and you leave some things behind. Now, if we go on that way, there will be development. There will be no excuse, no excuse for crude oil theft. There is no excuse for crude oil theft. But, of course, there will be, you won't have um, um, those um, living in these communities lie around and look for some criminal activities to participate in. 
So we'll get those living in the communities to actually develop themselves, go into agriculture, and um, that would be great. Now, I didn't even uh, talk about uh, the issue of uh, funding. I don't know how uh, that has uh, been uh, dealt with. I mean, that is issue of funding, uh, has there been uh, challenges in that regard? No well, challenges, they're just discussing right now. And I'm sure very soon, very, very soon, it will be, we've gotten close to the end. But they'll let you know. You say they, who are they? Um, the oil companies, the minister, high prep. We'll let you know when it's all concluded. So it's so, so much of work is still uh, going uh, going on. Well, I think we I think we're there. I think we're there. It's about negotiations, but I think we're there. All right, madam, we're about to round it off now, but uh, l l let's even go back uh, to uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, who is also from the Niger Delta, as we all know, and uh, I'm sure he's very passionate about uh, this agency achieving uh, quite a, a lot in the area of uh, restoration. Now, I don't know if you've had cause to sit down with Mr. President, you know, to look at some of these issues that we, we've talked about. and. Uh, what can you, if you have, what can you really say is the, uh, should I say, the, the, the desire or the hunger, Mr. President, to uh, really uh, achieve uh, the restoration that we're talking about, you know, with high prep? Well, I think that the, the, the President is very, very, very interested in the restoration of impacted communities. He approved the establishment of high prep and it really gave us a wide scope to investigate and evaluate, recommend and restore all, all hydrocarbon impacted communities in Nigeria. It shows his passion. He's interested in providing alternative sources of livelihood for those involved also in crude oil theft. You remember at the meeting with um, the Ogonis, um, after the establishment of high prep, he, he mentioned that. He is very much, he, this is his legacy, restoring impacted communities. So he is very, very interested. And um, I'm sure it would be one of the legacies of his government. All right, madam, I guess we'll just have to round it up out there. We thank you so much for spending time with us on this program. Uh, Mrs. Okay. Joy Nune Okuno, the National Coordinator of High Prep, we thank you for spending time thank with you. us. Thank you. Stand with High Prep as we start the restoration. Thank you very much. Thank again. you. For many analysts in the oil and gas sector, the coming of high prep is indeed historic, or judging from the fact that it's the first of its kind in sub-Saharan Africa. Our guest believes strongly that this project is indeed committed to the restoration of health of the people, and their socio-economic development, awareness campaigns, lands and shoreline cleanup and restoration, all in accordance with international best practice. While HYPREP begins to implement emergency measures in Oguniland, which Nigerians also expect to spread to other communities in the Niger Delta, it is hoped that all data from UNEP as it concerns the recommendations will be implemented. Well, that's our package for this week. Don't forget to send us your questions, comments and suggestions to questiontime at channelstv.com or also watch us online at channelstv.com. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. Till next week. Have a good day.